What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Monday, and welcome to Rant TNH. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, uh, and today we're gonna be diving into the best everyday watch for under fifteen thousand uh, dollars. It's a lot of money for an everyday watch, but let's see if I can come up with something. Before we jump into today's uh, pick, I uh, will do a quick wristwatch check. Uh, I am wearing my watch, uh, my, my Datejust, my first um, personal watch purchase. It's a reference 1601 from 1977. It actually turns 40 this year, which I think is very cool. Uh, I have it strapped on a Theo and Harris Type 1 um, uh, strap. Uh, we made these in collaboration with Jean Rousseau, uh, an amazing, amazing uh, strap manufacturer. I have put these straps next to uh, our, you know, our competitor straps, comparable price to anywhere from 150 to 225. Uh, and I can say without question that these are the best uh, straps. And frankly, you don't even need to know anything about leather or know anything about workmanship. I mean, it's just obvious. If you hold it, if you, if you, just, if you just feel how substantial the straps are, it becomes glaringly obvious that the folks over at Jean Rousseau uh, cut no corners, that they are just true craftsmen. So anyway, uh, these straps are available in the watch shop at theowenharris.com. Um, we're very lucky to offer them. So I'm gonna keep my, my pick short and sweet here. There weren't many options. This category is really, really weird. Uh, because a watch that comes in at fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars needs to be better than a watch at eight or nine, like we recommended before. But in so many instances, they're not. And if they are, they're not very versatile. A Longa eighteen fifteen is a wonderful watch that can be had around thirteen to fifteen thousand. It's not very versatile. You know, most people are not going to want to wear a Longa to the bar. You know, like I said, in t-shirt and jeans, or you know, in a flannel. You know, in in, in Vans. Would I, now would I do that? Probably. Yeah, I love Longa. I love you know formal watches. But I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about I think what I think the masses uh, are going to be you know ready to do. So unfortunately, Longa had to go off the list. And that same note, uh, the Vacheron Constantine, the, the the Patrimony had to go off the list. Another wonderful watch that to me just although beautiful and, and extremely valuable at its price point um, is not every day. It doesn't have that incredible versatility that the watch that I did choose does have. The watch I did choose uh, is a Royal Oak by Adamar Piguet. Uh, it is one of my favorite watches of all time. And, and let me go into why um, from the watch itself, and then I want to go into the exact reference that I chose. So at 1972, at the Basel World Fair, AP introduced the Royal Oak. It was a watch designed by General Genta that was supposed to you kind of look into the future, reinvent what it meant to be luxury. Before at this point, there hadn't been a watch um, that, that provoked people or inspired people to appreciate steel. It isn't a precious metal, and it wasn't appreciated in that you know, particular time and culture. So when Gerald Genta and Admar, and Admar Piguet you know, got together, designed this Royal Oak, and gave people a reason to value steel and look at steel as something that's just holy, it revolutionized the way we view watches. You know, now we have the Royal Oak, now we have the Nautilus, we have the Vacheron Constantine uh, Overseas, I mean, which is the 222 originally. I mean, we have uh, uh, Piaget Polo S. I mean, there are so many of these, you know, children of this idea that really started the Royal Oak. It's like Howard Stern and everyone else that came after Howard Stern. You know, I, I'm also a big Howard Stern fan. So, so, so to me, someone who really appreciates history and narrative, um, it's, it's the perfect um, story. You know, it's literally a watch to change the world's perception of luxury in respect to watches. So right there, the watch is off to a very good start. Now, the problem comes, you know, is that vintage APs are extremely expensive uh, and, and modern APs are as well. The retail prices are high and the residual value is pretty damn good. So even the secondhand watches trading for, you know, Thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars plus, and those are the most approachable Royal Oaks. Then I found a reference that really interested me, and it's the reference that I chose here today. It's the fifteen four fifty. It's a thirty-seven millimeter Royal Oak, which, although sounds small to a lot of you guys, uh, really does wear incredibly large. A thirty-seven millimeter Royal Oak probably wears, you know, just as large as a vintage forty millimeter Rolex. Um, I've seen them, I've held them, and I can definitely say that they are substantial. But still, because they still are thirty-seven, you know, they don't really overpower, and that to me is a beautiful. A uh, fine line to walk and a line that AP in the last 10 or 20 years hasn't really walked very well. You know, you know, keeping the offshore in mind, a watch that I hate, many of you love, and that's fine. You know, it's clear that like it or hate it, AP doesn't seem to care all too much about really having that balance. You know, it's just, it's big, it's bold, it's ostentatious, it's AP, and that's it. 
you know, whereas this watch has that level of, of delicacy that I think makes the harshness of the bracelet and everything all the more attractive. You know, when I wear a Royal Oak, um, I think it's amazing that you're looking at this piece of steel or gold and whatever it is and, and there are these aggressive sharp lines and it, it feels like it's such you know a piece of machinery but then it you know it honestly is is quite small um i had a reference 4100 and uh, i was amazed you know by that dynamic it's 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 super utility but it's also like really compact and thin. So that to me is an amazing feat that I think that AP achieved here with the 15450. Uh, beyond that, getting mechanical, uh, it's powered by the uh, 3120 uh, AP in-house caliber, which is not only a beautiful movement, I mean, which you can see in the, you know, I think it's 22 karat gold, you know, uh, bi-directional rotor. Um, but if you dive in, uh, and there are a couple of great articles about it online that I really enjoyed reading, the level of unnoticed and under the radar technology is kind of amazing. Not only have they achieved a 60 hour power reserve on one barrel not two uh, but they've regulated they've timed this watch within a maximum of 3.5 second deviation a day i mean that kicks cosc's ass you know and honestly for a watch that would sell itself even if it ran at seven seconds a day you know but to me i, I just love that narrative i love when brands you know who could really you know package up a lesser product could just move it because it is the royal oak you know, it's a re it's a reality. I mean, I can't imagine their sales would be all too affected, you know, if, if they had, you know, lesser quality control. You know, I, I can't imagine that, you know, if they put a cheaper, easier movement uh, inside, not necessarily a cheap and easy movement, but, you know, something that took less time and less innovation and, and everything. This movement took like five years to develop. This isn't like a joke, but that's exactly what makes them, you know, part of the Holy Trinity, right? The idea that, uh, you know, we are who we are because we don't have to be and still choose to be, which is an extremely commendable idea. So, although I'm the first guy to give any branch uh, you know, when they're resting on their laurels or whatever it is. You got to give AP the credit. They built an absolutely incredible new iteration on a classic. Uh, they paid respect uh, and they improved. So you can get these, you know, they retail around 17. You can get them around 14 to 15. Uh, residual value is tight, uh, which is another admirable thing. Uh, and I highly recommend this watch to anyone uh, looking for a best everyday watch around 15 grand. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Rent TNH. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel right down below and follow us on Instagram at Theo and Harris. I'll say it again, follow us on Instagram at Theo and Harris. Uh, it's very important. That is where we share all of our watch content every day from APs and Rolexes and Tudors and God knows what. Uh, so please go ahead and do that. Uh, and that's it. Get ready for tomorrow's watches because the drop is going to be sick. See you guys tomorrow.